Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. Now, in this uh, part of the video series and in this part of the Absolute Beginner Guide, we're going to start learning how to use TransX. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And our first task to begin learning TransX is going to be to just go to the moon. So we're going to repeat a flight that we've already done, but we're going to go to we're going to uh, go to the moon instead of say going out to Mars or going to Jupiter or something like that. And the the reason for that is because we need to we need to get a base understanding of TransX. We need to start getting familiar with it. And before we worry about going out to Mars or anything more complicated than that, it would help if we just learn how to go to the moon and back to Earth. Uh, that way, once you then go to Mars, you have at least some familiarity with the MFD. You know how to navigate it to some extent. So first of all, we're going to, we're going to repeat a lot of what we did when we went to the moon just using transfer MFD. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time here on those points because if, uh, again, I'm assuming you're going to watch all these videos in order so you have all that information to build on. But if you haven't seen the uh, going to the moon video in the Absolute Beginner Guide, that, that that's like a prerequisite to watching this. So make sure you go watch that. And if you haven't seen it in a while, maybe stop this video and then go back and watch that one so you can get that level of familiarity back and then come back and watch this. So let's start by doing what we did in the other flight. We're going to uh, reference the moon, first of all. And we're going to see uh, if we target Brighton Beach. We can see here that Brighton Beach is just a, eh, like, two or three days away from going into the dark. And as I talked about in the other uh, Earth the Moon video, if you would prefer to arrive at Brighton Beach when the lights are shining, or I should say, I should say when the sun is up, you're going to want to make sure that this day-night terminator is uh, is farther this way. So let's bring up the scenario editor and go to the date, and we can either back time, back up time, or go forward. It doesn't matter. But if we uh, come over here to the date or the day. And we can back up the date just a little bit like that. Because remember, it takes, uh, you know, three days, uh, three and a half days to get to the moon. So if the moon, uh, if the uh, if Brighton Beach is like this, then if we, then the three days that it takes to get to the moon, it would be like, it would be in the dark. So one, two, three, you can see by the time we arrived at Brighton Beach, it would be in the dark. So if we prefer, and it doesn't really matter, but if we prefer Brighton Beach to be, you know, still in the sunlight when we get there, then you want to have this day-night terminator at this point. Now, three days from now, one, two, three, you can see Brighton Beach is still, you know, in the day. So I just, uh, I just like to make that point so that people can understand, you know, type the timing of the arrival a little bit. So once we did that step, then we want to bring up a line plane MFD. And we want to target the moon, which I already have targeted here. And we just want to fast forward time until the relative inclination is as low as it will get. And remember that the rate, if it's positive, then the relative inclination is actually going to go up. And if the, relative, uh, if the rate is negative, then the relative inclination is going to go down. Right now it's negative. So that means that as I fast forward time here, the, uh, the relative inclination is coming down. So I'm just going to fast forward time until this is as low as it will get. And we have two indicators of what of what that is, uh, what, or when it's going to be at its lowest point. Number one, again, is the rate. Right now it says negative 0 0.000. If this switches to positive, then the relative inclination immediately starts going up. And if that happens, if you sh overshoot it by a lot, you should probably bring the scenario editor back up and back up the date because you don't want to, let me just show you what I mean. If we're doing this and we're like, oh, you know, we overshot, we would want to bring the scenario editor up and go to the date and then just back up, you know, whatever it was, a few minutes. 
until the uh, rate or until the relative inclination is at its lowest point which it looks like uh, 29 is its lowest so we'll go with that so this is the right time to take off now in the interest of time since I assume that if you've watched you know I think we're up to like video number 30 at this point or 29 something like that if you've watched this many videos in the absolute beginner guide then I'm quite confident that you know how to get into orbit so at this point we would just take off uh, we'd fly the runway heading you know bank to 90 degrees and then and then go up into orbit uh, in the interest of time I'm going to skip the ride to orbit I'm going to use the scenario editor to uh, put the Delta glider in orbit but the orbit that I'm going to put myself in would be exactly the same thing as if I just flew at a 90 degree heading but uh, it'll take uh, 12 extra minutes to do that, and I just want to cut down on the time. So I'm going to bring up the uh, scenario editor, go to orbital elements, and I'm going to put this on kilometers. And then we know that for Earth, a 200 kilometer orbit is 6571. Then we want a zero eccentricity and apply. And now we are in a 200 by 200 orbit. If we bring up orbit MFD, we can see that. We raise the landing gear switch over to the orbit HUD so basically what we have here now uh, you can imagine that we just took off from Earth we flew at a 90 degree heading and we just arrived in orbit and we circularized our orbit so basically we just did that you know fast forward or something like that just to save the time all right let me go to the prograde position just so we can get to a familiar orientation now once you're in orbit and you have your orbit circularized we know that w that one of the highest priorities of business at that point is going to be to uh, bring the relative inclination down to zero now i will say that this method is actually not as fuel efficient as it uh, as another option and the other option is called an off-plane transfer i will cover that in a different video but for this video for just learning the basics of Transex, I wanted to start by having you do everything that you've already done. And in the previous video, when we used a tra uh, transfer MFD, once we got up into orbit, we had to bring our relative inclination down to zero. So we're going to do the same thing in this video. So the orbit circular, and we're going to fast forward time now to the descending node and try to think about what that means. What orientation do I need to be in when I get to the descending node? And when do I begin the burn? So I'll let you think about that for a second while I get over to the t while I get over there. Okay, hopefully you said that we need to be in the orbit plus position, and that's because a n equals a n ascending node equals anti normal, and since we're not at the ascending node, then it's the other one. It's normal plus. And hopefully you said that uh, the time to begin the burn would be about forty five seconds uh, 48 seconds something like that and why is that well if we look at the total estimated thrust at the descending node it's 98.17 and if we divide that by two then we have uh, 40 what is it 47 I think no it wouldn't be 47 it would be 49 so 49 seconds so at TN 49 we need to engage the full power of the main engines and also remember what we talked about with regards to aligning planes when you engage the full power of the main engines the autopilot doesn't always hold exactly at night this 90 degree position which can perturb your orbit so to prevent that from happening you have a couple of options option number one you can start the burn earlier than 49 seconds and use less power and if you're using less power it won't uh, it won't disturb the it won't disturb the uh, the orbit the the position as much the second option would be to turn off the normal plus autopilot and manually control your pitch so that you can stay closer to that 90 degree position and since we are uh, getting a little bit better as orbinauts that's what we're going to do you know by now if it, earlier on I would probably recommend you know just using like one third engine power that way you don't have to fuss with the uh, pitch but by this point you know even though we are still absolute beginners we should still be able to handle 
basic things like uh, pitch control. So let's switch over to rotation so we're ready to do that. And again, when we're at 49 seconds, we're going to engage the full power of the main engines. And then we'll just adjust the pitch as necessary. So coming up here on the burn in just a couple seconds. And burning. And as, as needed, I will adjust the pitch. And the reason for that is to make sure that the uh, APA and PEA are not perturbed. You watch over here, you can see our APA coming down a little bit. That's actually okay because it's a little on the high side already anyway. But I'm just controlling with just control uh, or control eight and control two in order to keep myself right here at that 90 degree position. And uh, notice how long this burn is. I mean, this is, a, this is a substantial burn. There's actually a way to calculate how much delta V we're using. And in some future video, Maybe I'll start making an, an intermediate beginner guide or something, but in some future video, maybe I'll talk about how to actually do the calculation so that you know in advance how much fuel you're using to do a burn like this. And plane changes, again, if you remember back in some of my earlier videos, I, I told you, I said, always think this, plane change equals expensive. When we're in a low orbit like this, it's costing us a relative fortune to do this burn. I mean, this is an extraordinarily expensive burn. That's why it's a little bit better. It's a lot better, I should say, to do off-plane transfers. But we'll talk about off-plane transfers in another video. Okay, we're not too far away from the uh, end of this burn. We're down to one degree out. And again, I'm just using very slight uh, control eight, control two to keep the vessel pitched right there at 90 degrees. But now I need to pay attention to the relative inclination. And done. And then we'll translate the last little bit, actually a little bit more on the main. And there we have it. Now we have a relative inclination of 0, 0.00. And the estimated thrust is zero and the uh, and everything's good there. Okay, so now we're all set up. Let's actually take a look at map MFD. And let's target the moon. And you can see now that our orbit is exactly you know, in the same plane as the moon. Now we uh, need to start setting up transects. Let me take a sip of water here and then we'll get on, get on with that. Now before we get into transects, uh, before we get on with transects, make sure that you've seen the video that I did called How to Fix Transects. Tra the, the version of transects that comes with Orbiter 2010 by default has a known bug and it doesn't actually cause any problems when we're going to the moon but it does cause problems when we're coming back to earth from the moon so it, it, make sure you've downloaded the uh, newer version of transex that's located on orbit hangar and there's a description in the link down below uh, not only does it fix that bug but it also has a lot of cool features that that the uh, standard standard transex doesn't have Okay, so now we're oriented to the prograde position. And let's turn prograde off. All right, we have transects loaded. Uh, notice that I loaded it on both sides, and there's a reason for that. We'll get, into, we'll get into the left and right part of it in a moment. But for starters, let's just take a look at, you know, what we're looking at. You know, it, I think it helps to understand how to use these MFDs if you kind of, if you can at least grasp, you know, what the graphics mean. So actually, let me load Orbit MFD on this side. And you'll kind of notice there's a lot of similarity, at least in the, in the look, between, between Orbit MFD and between Transex. And that's because currently they're showing pretty much the same information. This gray circle here is the surface of the Earth. And this gray circle here is the surface of the Earth. This green ring that you see around here, obviously, that's our orbit. You're sh you should be very familiar with that idea by now. And this green ring on the outside here is our orbit. If you look really closely, you'll see there's a blue ring as well. And that blue ring basically represents that uh, Earth has an atmosphere. And we should be just slightly above it. I don't think we can zoom in any more than that. Uh, no, I don't think we can. And this line points to where we are at in our orbit around the Earth. And that is the same as what you see over here. 
this line points to where we are at in our orbit around the Earth. And some of this information over here is also available to us in in orbit MFD. You can see the major radius. That's the distance between the uh, center of the Earth to the surface is 6371. And uh, actually, I guess it doesn't show that over here. But the uh, focus PED and focus APD, that's our periapsis and our apoapsis. That's the same as what you see over here. Our periapsis uh, from the center from the center of the Earth out to where we are at is 6,557 kilometers. And that's the same thing that we have over here. So that just gives you, you know, again, an indication of what you're looking at when you bring up Transex because, you know, a lot of times when you load an MFD for the first time, you know, you just, you just don't even know what you're looking at. Take a sip of water. Now, <clears throat> in order to go to the moon, um, I'm not going to go through and just sit here and say, you know, this is what the help button does and this is what forward does and all that. I don't think people learn that way. I know I don't. So I think the best way to learn how to use Transex is to, is to just do a task with it. And then you'll sort of gain a natural intuition as to uh, how to use it. So here's how we go to the moon. Notice that currently when you load it up by default, once you're in low Earth orbit, this is what it looks like. And it says select target planets, moons, and it's currently set to none. We want to change that to simply moon. Now, if for any reason it's, if for any reason this says uh, select targets and it's set on ships, then just press ADJ or minus AJ, either one of those, and you'll notice that that will adjust that center. It will adjust that line item. And that's one thing that's kind of important to know in the future is adjustments kind of change the item that you have. And then the way we change the selection of that item is to use plus and minus. But for now, it should say select target planets, moons, and you want to just click either plus plus or minus minus until you get to the moon. And once you have the moon selected, what we want to do then uh, is we want to bring up Transex on the other side also. So we'll load Transex over here, and you'll notice that currently it has the same information. But what we want to do is we want to go forward on this side, and then press VW to view the encounter. And this is one of the things that makes Transex a little more difficult to understand than some of the other MFDs, because most of the MFDs basically have uh, one page. Like when you're looking at Orbit MFD, there you don't have to go in through and navigate different parts of Orbit MFD. There's just Orbit MFD. And when you're looking at Map MFD, there's nothing to navigate. It's just Map MFD. And the same thing with Align Plane, same thing with Surface MFD, and uh, most of them. But but the way Transex works, and the way some a couple of other MFDs work, is there are multiple levels within the same MFD. Now, technically, you do not have to have that side open. Let me show you. If we want, we can go forward on this side. And now we'll notice we're viewing stage two of two, which is what we had over here. So we can go back and forth just on, just on one side. So it's not absolutely necessary to have two MFDs open. But once we get into this a little bit more, you'll understand why it's beneficial to have this MFD over here showing Transex Stage 1, and this MFD over here showing Transex Stage 2. Now, don't worry too much about the staging stuff at this point. Try not to let that confuse you. Um, I would say think of it more like, instead of kind of replace the word stage with page. Think of this as just page 1 of 2, um, and I'm not sure that that's necessarily the best idea, but... I just don't want you to start. I just don't want you to try to think in terms of like staging multiple levels of burns or anything like that. Because at this point, that's not what we're doing. So, again, on this uh, left MFD stage one of two, and on the right MFD stage two of two, and make sure that it says view encounter. If it doesn't say view encounter, just press that VW button, and it'll go back and forth between setup and encounter. Now, in order to set up the uh, execution of the burn to go out to the moon, we need to do what's called a maneuver. 
And we did the same thing with uh, transfer MFD, but it just worked a little bit differently. To set up a maneuver, we need to switch views here in Transex because currently we're at the view setup. So if we press VW, we go to view maneuver. If I press VW again, I go back to view setup. So if I just, you know, back and forth between those two different views. So with view maneuver, the only option that we have at this point is maneuver mode. And the only thing we can do is turn it on. If we press any of the other buttons, they don't really do anything. You know, pressing VAR doesn't do anything. Minus v VR doesn't do anything. And there's no adjustments over here to make. If I press ADJ or minus AJ, there are no adjustments. The only thing that we can do when we have the v maneuver view up and maneuver mode is off, the only thing that we can do is turn it on. And we can turn it on by either pressing the plus plus <clears throat> or minus minus. So we're going to turn it on. <clears throat> Once we have maneuver mode on, we now have access to variables that we didn't have access to before. So now if I press VAR, I have this, I have that variable, that variable, that one, and so on. And then they just go in a circle. If I just continually press VAR, I just get right back around to maneuver mode on. Now again, if I have maneuver mode off, Notice that I can't select any of those variables because maneuver mode's off. So turn maneuver mode on. And what we need to do is go to the prograde variable. Remember that in order to get to the moon, we need to raise one side of our orbit. The, the moon is in orbit around the Earth, and that's actually, I should mention, I don't think I said this yet, but what we're looking at here in this stage is the Earth is here in the center, and there's a little green circle around the Earth that you can hardly see, but that's us orbiting the Earth. And then this great big blue ring around the Earth is the Moon. It's, it's the Moon's orbit around the Earth, I should say. And this blue line right here is pointing to where the Moon is currently at in its orbit around the Earth. Now it takes 27.32 days for the Moon to orbit the Earth one time. So if we were to sit here for seven days, the, the moon, we would watch the moon go like that. It would come about over here to this position. And in about 14 days, roughly, it would be over here. And if we waited a full lunar cycle, it would go all the way around and back here to where it started. Now, again, in order to get to the moon, we need to raise one side of our orbit. And if you remember back to the uh, when we set up the transfer MFD, we turned on the hypothetical transfer mode, and that's kind of the same thing as turning on maneuver mode. And then we clicked and held that DV plus button to add in a bunch of delta V. So we're going to do the same thing here with the prograde. We're going to press this plus plus button and hold it. And it's going to go quite a bit faster than it did when we pressed the DV plus. But you can see now that this orbit, uh, this is our hypothetical orbit. This is what would happen if we applied that much delta V. We would come out to about here and then come back in. So we're just going to keep adding in some delta V. And now we've way overshot the moon. You can see that, uh, you know, if this, if, if this is the moon's orbit around the Earth and we're saying that we're going to come way out here, then we have way overshot the moon. So how do we resolve that? Well, you could go minus, minus, but now you're stuck in this. Now you have this problem where pressing plus is too much and hitting minus isn't enough. So this is where we do an adjustment. If you press the ADJ button, it'll adjust that middle part. Course is uh, one of the higher, higher levels of adjustment. There's actually one more that's even higher than that. It's called rough, which is back here. So if we were to press rough, it would add in way more. I'll show you like that. And if we hit minus minus, um, it's not nearly enough. So if we do an adjustment to go from coarse to medium, now, when we press plus plus, you can see we have finer control over adding and subtracting, uh, adding and subtracting the delta v. And you can see here that this is about right. That's about how much we need. But if it if this medium setting still isn't quite uh, refine, uh, isn't quite fine enough, what you can do is hit adjustment again and go down to fine. And now notice when we press plus plus and minus minus, it's even finer yet. And there are several levels. You can go to Super, which gives you even finer control. And you can go to uh, Ultra. And you can see clearly, you know, that's such a small amount of 
delta v change at this point that it almost doesn't make any difference. And then there's also hyper, and finally micro is the last one. And micro is ultra, ultra small. Well, you wouldn't really use micro for this situation. So uh, let's just run through that again real quick. Let's reset. So in order to put in the amount of prograde velocity that we need to get to the moon, we uh, it starts off on course, but if we want, we can even back up and go to rough and press plus a couple times until we get roughly out to uh, the moon's orbit, and there we are. Now we can do an adjustment down to uh, medium, and we can start bringing it back in, do an adjustment down to fine, and maybe an adjustment down to super. And somewhere around there is about as much velocity as you're going to need to get out to the moon. You can see that uh, this hypothetical shows us going out to the moon's orbit, going just a little bit beyond it, and then coming back in. And something like that is what you need. You could bring it down a little bit more if you wanted to. Now, uh, we have a, a problem here, though. And that is, if we were to do this burn right now, this very second, we would end up over here. And the moon, uh, by the time we get out to this point, we would end up here, I mean. But the moon would actually be on the other side of Earth, almost. It's almost, uh, it's not quite 180 degrees across, but it's on the other side of the Earth. So that means w that we don't want to do the burn right now. If we do the burn right now, we're going to just completely miss the moon by, you know, like, uh, almost like a million kilometers or something. We're going to be super far away. So the way we resolve that is we just go to the, uh, we go through the variables. And again, if you press VAR just several times, you just cycle through the variables. They just go around in a circle. And the variable that we want to adjust now is the timing variable. We want to change the time that we're going to do this burn. Uh, we're coming up to 30 minutes on this part of the video, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. And when we come back, we'll take a look at how to uh, set up the timing of this burn in Transex, and then we'll uh, continue on from there. If you like this part of the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the don't like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, and I will see you in the next part.